What else could happen? Flip upside down. Yeah. So just understanding how you know how your descender works. Well, you said it's two ropes that's thick, so it's gonna be I'm gonna be feeding it through. And if this way I right. break on, keep my right. feet wide. Right. Sounds good to me. What the hell? That's why we're here. And with that, I begin my descent. Goodbye, I love you. The really hard part comes halfway down, where the rock face just disappears. One wrong step here, my feet flip over my head, and I'm in serious trouble. I'm in southeastern Utah, rappelling down a cliff face. Just ahead's the lip, the toughest part. Poor footwork here will send my feet flying over my head and I'll be left dangling hundreds of feet above solid ground. I'm past the lip. I can almost hear the sigh of relief from my guide, Vaud Haydenfeld, who's easing me down. Navigating these cliffs gives me a new appreciation for the ancient Anasazi who lived in them. It's their mystery I'm pursuing out here on Utah's Cedar Mesa Plateau. Why did the Anasazi move into the cliffs and then disappear from this area 800 years ago? At Mesa Verde, I learned that Native Americans believe the cause was drought. But some archaeologists think it's a lot more complicated and violent. Look up above, a large spiral. Oh, wow. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, it's an incredible spiral. You know, it's a Really large one, pigment still in pretty good shape. You have a sense of what that meant? The spiral? Yeah, I've, uh, heard, I've heard a lot of different stories. And it's yeah, the, you know, Hopis and people who claim ancestral uh, heritage here uh, have, you know, meanings to it. You know, it might be in a migration or their people. Or... This could just be the marker of these people at this site uh, saying, you know, this is us, we're here. Well, the dwelling's just over here this way. Yeah, let's go down and. And uh, have a look at the, the best part. We're coming right out to the edge of this ledge. You know, which gets, starts getting that kind of defensive nature. A wall here. And a, a good, view, good view of the tower. Greenery there, corn cobs still right, in the you greenery. You can see the corn cobs. Yeah. That is incredible. This is amazing. These corn cobs are over 800 years old. And they're still here as if, as if they were left just yesterday. Unbelievable. We're coming right out to the edge of this ledge. This is my uh, favorite part of this particular site. This little end ruin. All the rock art images on this whole wall. A large panel. We have bear tracks and mountain lion tracks. You've got this bighorn sheep down here. Anthropomorphic figures. Big, long zigzag that comes across this whole entire wall panel. Oh, wow. And here she is. Yep, this is kind of the jewel at the end of, end of the trail. Honey, I'm home. Wow. We came down all the way back there. Yeah. But why live here? Why, why build this here? I see the tower, right, which we saw on the way down. I guess it's the view. This is, I mean, it's, it's a really, it's a stunning, it's a stunning view, but you know, the question that, that what I don't get is, this isn't easy. You know, they had to they had to bring these rocks here. If not if not break them from the wall, then they, there's a lot of work. Yeah. So why? You know why why live here? Why bring their babies and their grandchildren to such a precarious location and, and live their lives here? Because something's going on that's forcing them into these kind of situations. Um, and you think that was warfare or well, there was tribal there's certainly strife unrest, going on. Yeah. There had to have been something to to get people to have to bring their their living up into these kind of places mm -hmm. you know out on ledges you know you've got huge drop-offs right out from the your doorway 
Uh, you can't really see. You have to mix mortar, yeah. get water up here to yeah. mix all this mortar to put these stones together. Uh, it's just an amazing amount of effort and it's not easy as you can see. Water, the closest water here is down in the canyon bottom. Look at these it, holes. They're called loopholes. What are they seeing? This one shows me basically that big rock. Yeah, which right could be there. a route of people coming up into this site. So if you start oh. looking at these, they're called loopholes. If you start yeah. looking through them, a lot of times along walls, they point in different directions mm, and that's show you things water. happening. So some people would call this a very defensive posturing type of aspect to this architecture. You know, it could be, uh, yeah, you could be looking at your water. You could be looking at a ledge where somebody might come across to, to uh, come into your site possibly to attack you, whatever. So some people interpret these as, as another kind of defensive type of posturing in, in these loopholed walls. You know, this is kind of the last structure on this whole ledge system. You know, is this, is this the final holdout right here? We don't know. And I'd like to stay longer. The sun's starting to head down over the canyon rim, and we probably ought to start heading out of here.